So I missed the last year's Open Harvest Summit because I am in Rome.、Uh, this year I have a lot to say, and time is short, so I will be a little bit excited. So I'm going to talk about design from manufacturer because I think a lot of you know design for manufacturer. It is、uh, too arrogant for small team for the early stage product to say design for manufacturer because a lot of the suppliers don't care because the volume is too small. So instead, we can do what we can do is we share resources for from existing manufacturings. And to look at how we can design and ramp up more smoothly. So、uh, a lot of things we have seen is that the makers are facing the difficulty of manufacturing. So I'm very excited. We are talking about manufacturing today, and、uh, I want to give you some examples for the small teams who has facing much easier in their supply chains. So they are like the supply chain makers. They are. I'll say、uh, doing it in totally different way, more agile way, so-called Shenzhen. So some of you might have heard of these Shenzhen mobile phones. They actually come from the story, like 500 years ago, about the Chinese Robin Hood. Like the small cottages, the, the gangsters, but they have their rules and the beliefs to work together. But now、uh, I'm not going to that too much. You can Google a little bit and find more.、Uh, but now. They are coming up with technologies. They have the illegal copycat, bad quality mobile phones, but they are becoming outdated. They are evolving into something new. It's called the derivative Robin Hood. I'm calling them. They have all kinds of mobile phones that fits into different niche market, and they are very, very affordable. Like Bonnie Huang just、uh, pointed out last year, there is a twelve dollars mobile phones, and and they they. Time to market is very fast. Like one month, they can have a new idea and get that sold in the channels. And they has fit into a very diverse、uh, market. I think the success story is that they are not working alone. They have、uh, a lot of competitions among different Robin Hoods, but they work together. They try to share the same factories, so they can buy their parts cheaper. They can hire the same engineer to do their works. And share the cost. The another another newer、um, example is a Sonowheel.、Um, it's、uh, like an electric auto balance bike. It was sold at like two thousand dollars and invented in the United States. It was too ex expensive and、uh, it's、uh, not available. I don't see anyone riding it in the states. But the fact is, I see people riding it in Shenzhen. Average one per day, I can see. So they. Took the idea and、uh, remodeled it in a very different way. Like they have the、uh, racer version with the pedals. I bought the twin wheel version, which much is much easier for people like me to learn. And you can put an iPad on it. Maybe put it in, like、uh, change it into a telepresence robot. And you can find more than twenty different models out in the market. There's another commonality is that they share. The parts from electric bikes, so they use the same battery, they use the same button, they use the same chargers, but they, they from the commonalities they have their speciality. Some might very good and the, the app using a mobile phone to control it. Some of them might change the、um, enclosure to make it better looking. Some could have some carbon fiber fiber ticks to make it cool, but they share a lot of these common. Pass to make it feasible for each to come up with some idea and manufacture in time and in a very affordable cost.、Uh, the cost is like three hundred dollars each. So this is a more closer example. It's、uh, the Crazy Fly. It's from a Swedish company called Cra、uh, Bitcris, and Tobias will be here in the weekends. So it's a palm-sized quadcopter. It's a very cool idea about two or three years ago. And a lot of media has reported about that, but then there are toy companies in China. They might be operate elsewhere as well. So they come up with all kinds of derivatives. The same, they share the same components. They have a lot of,、uh, how say, design for manufacturer process efforts to make them easy to do. It's not only abusing on the label, but it's more on designing it according to the manufacturing. 
So what we can see from this is, uh, should we be angry about that? I'm talking with a, a Swedish team. If we look at them as them, so we will never, how say, collaborate. We'll be competing with them. But if we take a step forward, be more open, it's another group of people making quad co-opters. Can we work together? I think definitely yes. These people are more open than we thought. You can pause those there. You can just, can I buy your parts? Can you manufacture for me? Or do you want to join my company? So I think if we, our products get sanitized, we have very high, poss high possibility to sanitize them again, to learn what they have improved, to hug them into the open innovation movement. So we can get from annoyed to blessed. Back to the topic. So I think what I'm going to share today is there is a big, huge advantage for open hardware people to benefit from open hardware, not only on designing, but also manufacturing, because we have so many resources we are sharing. So the game has changed. If you look at 1984, the things are very unified, especially in the Soviet countries. And uh, the manufacturing is very centralized. The process is very rigid. You build something, you want to manufacture forever. And the components are usually dedicated. But now we are in an area that is more long tail. There are so many different companies manufacturing very decentralized. And the pro process is usually flexible. You have the same equipment, but you make different kinds of things. In our pre-request is that the components are are becoming more and more standardized, which means they have the footprint, they have the same interface. But I see what could be the next extreme, and it might be totally customized. As people have so many niche markets, so many ego, this thing has to be like, manufacturing has to be more like a service. As a service, it should be approximate to the customers. You, you just go down to the street and you find some place, then you can get your things made, tailored to your needs. So, I think the process is becoming more ready as we have more and more mature, powerful 3D printers. And we will have even more robotics that can assemble things for us. The process itself is much less relied on the technicians. But the components, it's still the big headache, I think, for people who want to manufacture. So <clears throat> for the services, for customized things, I think the components need to be very much shared. If you look at Tiki, they have a similar, several meanings of SQ. You don't want to store them locally. So if you want to do it manufacturing locally, you need to have a shared small quantity of things. Here is another example. Um, we have, I think I get the starting to have this idea since the first Open Harvest Summit. We we're talking about we have a wiki for the parts. And uh, from a st statistic, um, Calculation, we have uh, uh, from the 100 very popular components, they can consist like 30% of average bio material. So if we can share the library, we can share the supply chain, we can improve the cost, lead time, quality, and very importantly, you can have, you can share the knowledge of people. So we took an example, it's called Esprino, it's a Kickstarter campaign. And this guy comes to us and says, okay, I want to get this manufactured. We have 4,000 orders. Say, so, can you change the components if it's possible? So he looked at the open path library we are listed. By that time, he says, why not? So he changed all the components except for the microcontrollers. And we only spent 20 days going for the first prototype to 4,000 4, pieces shipping. Because all the components are in our warehouse. Some of them are in our pick and split machine. We don't bother to change it. So it's very frank. I think we, <clears throat> it's a good example that we can benefit from these open hardware resources. And this is just the beginning. I think some of you have known that OcularPass just uh, published their common pass library. It's the same idea, but they are more like big, more wider, more uh, neutral platform. And they are also working with all kinds of companies like Adafruit, Dragon, Imp, and I think uh, Huawei One 
and more companies, we, I think it could be a very shared resource for us. If we have more HDK, we have SDK for software. How about we have hardware development kit for all kinds of applications. And on each of the application, we share the same components. So we can make that kind of things. It's not only easy to design, but also easy to promote to other places. So another thing we want to do is, uh, we are looking at existing maker scene. We use a lot of industrial components for consumer electronics design, and I think it's wrong. As I, I, advantage in China is that we are very appreciative to the uh, consumer electronics supply chains. So we are keep digging into the mine and to see what other things we can use for the open hardware world. So. Uh, as from the cheap mobile phones, they have very good, reliable chipsets. So we bring them in, and they are interested in the maker scene as well, MediaTek. So we have used a mobile phone chipset to make it open to the public. So it's ARM7 processor with GSM, GPS, GPS, BOE, Wi-Fi, SD card, all in one. And we're trying to make it Arduino compatible, and it's open source. So if you want to design some mobile phone, you can just choose existing modules where they becoming very accessible. So it's called Linked One. You can check it out. And uh, this is just an example. We will dig more into the consumer electronic market. So we can use the resource for the open world. It's much more efficient to do that. So back to some introduction. So I'm Eric. I'm a maker and I'm a biker. So seed, we call ourselves maker for makers. What we really want to see is the differentiating products. They grow from idea to some prototype and all the way to an independent product. It's not necessary to grow from very high volume. It can like several hundred, several thousands, but it's still good enough to make something totally unique. And uh, for the bigger things, I think there are a lot of companies like Foxconn, like PCH, they can handle that. We are the middle school for the makers to grow. One more thing is that um, I think we don't want to argue with made in China or something like that. We want to say that we want to innovate with the world. And we come to the Make Fair Shenzhen, uh, will be happening next June again. It will be a featured Make Fair. So if you are interested, please give me some applause. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>